I think just Coach Bennett recruits players with a certain kind of character, and he must have saw that in me or heard that from Kirk, who's a close friend of his, because um, mm-hmm. I was on the New Zealand national team at a young age, and Kirk was like, he was the New Zealand goat pretty much, so he was the top dog in New Zealand, so he kind of saw me play, and he said this, he said some stuff about me to coach. Um, but now I just think Coach looks for players that are a certain type of way, and I fit that mold. Good evening, folks. Welcome to another edition of UVA Basketball with Locker Room Access. Tonight's show is recorded Thursday, March 26, 2020. Before we get to tonight's show, Locker Room Access is supporting an important drive that our producer TW is going to talk about. TW, can you please explain what's going on? Yes, so we we are just launching a, a few auctions where the um, – the profits will benefit those uh, hourly workers at UVA who, who obviously have lost pay due to the uh, shutdown of spring sports and all events at uh, the university. So, um, you know, this, this stretches more than just UVA. This is also Aramark. This is also the hourly workers and contractors that come in and set up a lot of the events that we um, ha- have cherished. And, you know, they're, they're just missing out. So we want to make sure we cover them. Um, as much as we can. So, you know, those UMBC shirts that, y- you know, the redeemed shirts that were so popular, we still have a few left. We're going to put those up for auction and all the profits are going to go to them. So please, uh, the link will be in the description. We're going to try to get some more items up um, as, as soon as we can. And, and we're going to obviously donate a bunch of uh, the items that are in the shop into the auction, but make sure you, you start bidding um, cause you know it, exactly where this is going and we'll have more details exactly how this fund is going to work. We're still working, uh, through the university to understand how, how we're going to, um, sort of, uh, allot the funds properly without missing out anyone. So, um, be sure to be on the lookout for that. That's a really important piece as we're all sort of fighting through this, um, this, this epidemic pandemic, I should say. Thanks TW. Recently, UVA's reach has had players come from all over the world. We've had Anthony Gill now playing in Moscow, Mike Toby in Spain, and tonight, amongst many others, Jack Salt is joining us. Jack, thanks for joining. Welcome. Thanks for having me show, Mark. We have tonight, I'm joined by my other hosts. TW is our producer. He's in California. Doug Smith, who played for UVA in the late 80s, early 90s, is in Jersey City. And Grant Kersey is joining us tonight as well. He's in Charlottesville. Jack, What's what up? is going on in New Zealand right now with this coronavirus thing? Well, right now we're on lockdown as of yesterday. So I'm going to be spending a lot of time in my house over the next four weeks or so. How's your family doing? They're good. Yeah, sister flew back over from Oklahoma. Um, just thought it'd be safer for her to be with mom. Um, but yeah, everyone's doing well. Thanks for asking. Can you tell everybody we'll where's your where's your house or your city in New Zealand for those of us who are geographically not so good? Yeah, for sure. Challenge. So I'm in um, I'm in Auckland. Yeah, that's right. I didn't know America before I came over there. I still don't know all the states. Right. right. Um, but no, so I'm in Auckland. Okay. The biggest, biggest city in New Zealand. Um, yep. Yeah, I was. I moved here when I was four from London, and I've been here ever since. We're going to come back to your mom and your sister in a little bit, and maybe we'll take a little trip down memory lane for your last three years at UVA. Uh, how did you end up at UVA initially? Um, so I, there's a guy, Kirk Penny, who's now the one of the assistant coaches. He he kind of 
recruited me and talked to me about what kind of a guy Coach Bennett was. Um, and then I went on my visit to UVA and I really liked it and I committed that visit. So it was kind of a fast process, but I'm happy I made the decision. So did you did you have multiple visits planned when you came to the States or was UVA the only school that you planned to visit during your time? I was supposed to visit UVA, then go to St. Mary's. But um, after my visit from UVA, it was, it was the best school that was recruiting me. And I kind of, I wanted to push myself and see if I could do it. So I was like, yeah, oh, let me, let me just bet on this and see how it goes. So that was kind of my decision making in, um, in selecting UVA. Did you know you were going to redshirt early on? Yeah, I had a pretty good idea. Um, I knew I was behind Americans and especially the guys on the bigs that were in the UVA team already. So I actually, I actually really enjoyed my redshirt year because I am. Um, MC is my guy, so I, I love getting to work out with him a lot and just be on scout team and learn because um, I had a lot of lot of learning to do. Can I ask a, can I ask a quick question on that? Yeah. yeah. And, and since you're since you graduated now and you're professional, whatever, looking back at yourself as being having been offered by UVA, why do you think they? What do you think they saw in you as a you know? let's say a foreigner, not in the AAU circuit in the U.S., I assume. What, what do you think that, you know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? Yeah, no, I know what you're saying. Um, I think just Coach Bennett recruits players with a certain kind of character, and he must have saw that in me or heard that from Kirk, who's a close friend of his, because um, mm-hmm. I was on the New Zealand national team at a young age, and Kirk was like, he was the New Zealand goat pretty much, so he was the top dog in New Zealand so he kind of saw me play and he said this he said some stuff about me to coach um, but now I just think coach looks for players that are a certain type of way and I fit that ball. Uh, that makes sense great answer I was I was very curious about that sounds like the sounds like the way I got my first job really I, a, UV, a UVA professor basically told somebody they had to hire me so I got lucky there <laughs> nice there you go okay connections there it is connections <laughs> Jack, you, you are people, I don't know if people realize this, but you really are, to me, you are the, the gentle giant, right? You epitomize, for me, I, I don't know if you remember me telling you, you and Isaiah, and we'll talk about your relationship later on. I'll ask you a question about your relationship later on with Isaiah. But you really represent those five pillars of, mm-hmm. of what UVA stands for and what Bennett's pro culture stands for. And you have, I mean, you're, the amount of respect you have and, and how kind you are and how humble you are, how hard you work. And I don't, I mean, not every player on the team is like that. Right. And, and uh, TW and I were talking about that earlier today and, and TW had, had made some good points and TW, I want you to actually explain it because I think the points were so strong and, and important and critical to a team's success. Yeah, I was just saying that, like, you know, we were talking about personalities on a team, and, and Mark's comment was like, you know, you, you guys are um, not ex- very different than, let's just say, for example, Ty, Dre, and Kyle. And I said, I think, you know, what makes a great team is the complementary pieces. You need you need a few kind of like dogs or um, assholes, so to speak, um, that, that really, like, take the lead in the charge and then others that are like, and what, what I call them is like, come with guys, guys that are like just down may not totally get buy in and be exactly the same, but they're like, I'm doing it cause I'm part of the team and I, I'll take one uh, for the team and, and be just come with you guys. Um, and if you have too many of the alpha dogs, like the chemistry doesn't work. And for, for whatever reason, coach Bennett has been able to like piece that together. Like we we're talking we we're talking about older teams where, you know, Justin a lot of times would be that vocal, like that dog, and then others would fall back a little bit and like take take the lead, and they needed that, and like it, they worked so well together. Whereas if you had too many people like like Justin or too many guys like Ty, they might butt heads, and the complementary pieces have, have worked well, and you meshed so well with everyone on the team, and like Devin and everyone, you know, like it all worked so well together that uh, we just thought that was like a. a special chemistry that that um you know kind of built that winning winning i don't know 
ingredient, uh, I would say? Or what, what are your thoughts on that? For sure. No, I mean, like you said, you can't have too many of those top dogs on a team. Um, but I just try to, like, I, I, feel, I said this a lot throughout my time that I just do whatever I can to help. And I know I, I'm pretty sure of who I am and I know who I am as a player. And I, I accept that. So my job, whenever I'm at, it's not really just for games because some games I didn't have a big role in my last year. But it was practice. It was in the weight room. And I just tried to do anything I could just to not not sulk and just be a positive um, a positive role model for some of the guys that were younger and just bring that positive energy to every practice, every weight session, every game. And, yeah, that's what I, that's what I tried to do on my last – well, on my whole time at UVA. And did you feel like that was, like, contagious a little bit? Because I feel like – that that vibe that you guys gave off really helped build sort of the, you know what the foundation of of the program. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I I I just did what I thought was best, and I tried to bring my best effort every day. Um, but I was lucky. My time, I feel like I got to UVA at a really fortunate time because I had leaders like Malcolm when I was first there, Anthony, uh, Darion, and then when I got older, it was Isaiah and Devin, and then my last year was. It was Ty. It was really Ty, Carl, and Dre. So I had a, I had a great group of people around me every year I was at UVA. So it was pretty easy for me to just work and come to, come to work happy, um, come to play happy each day. Before we get into your your redshirt sophomore year and and, and going down that, going down some of the highlights of, of your time at UVA, what was it like growing up playing in in, a, in New Zealand? Who would you who would you who taught you how to play? Who would you play against? Who would you play with? Um, yeah, no, I had um, I had some really good coaches while I was here. Uh, the Breakers is the professional team here, and I played in the junior program. Uh, my high school coaches out of my high school, a lot of uh, players that go on to play college are from in America. So, so I had a development program. Um, when I got older, I was taller than most. So I was usually the most athletic guy my size. And when I got to America, I was athletic, which was a shock to my system. But, um, but yeah, no, I had a lot of good coaches while I was here that I'm appreciated of. Going into your sophomore year, your registered sophomore year, you guys were slated to be pretty good. Didn't you? you guys then lose – Austin Nichols, right? Which was a big yeah. shot. Which was a, a it hurt the pro it hurt the team that year, right? Uh, he was supposed yeah, to be yeah. a, a great player, and I heard so many wonderful things about his offense ability. Um, and then yeah. you guys still had a fairly successful season, right? And then comes the uh, the the tournament, right? Um, you guys go into we you guys go to Florida, Orlando to play. Mm-hmm. And the first game was like for, for the fans, at least for me, I was like, oh, my gosh, this is game is crazy. We can't lose. We can't lose. And, and we pulled it out. Mario Shayak actually played great that game. Yeah, I remember. Uh, and then get crushed. Isaiah doesn't play against Florida. I guess he, and he was really sick again. I don't even I don't can't remember if he played against UNC Wilmington or not. Uh, and if yeah, he did, like, he, I think he played a little bit. Yeah, but he was really sick. And then he doesn't play against UNCW, and that was one of the ugliest losses. That was the worst loss I had seen UVA have since you know since I've been a fan and watching and, and playing. In terms of how much they lost by, uh, after that game, I guess everybody was still a little bit upset. And you may or may not remember this. I think the therapy for me was in the hotel lobby, the bar mm-hmm. that night. Your mom, your sister. I think it was Kyle's mother and maybe his stepfather. And then you and, and your sister came and your mom was holding court. Yeah. Do you remember that night? Yeah, I do. She was, she was on the, on a little bit of a buzz, but that was, that was good just to have that. I, I do remember that night. She was hilarious. I don't know if you remember. She's, you a, and your she's sister a character. And you and your, the jokes she was telling <laughs> You and your sister were so embarrassed. Oh no, I wasn't so embarrassed. Up. I'm used to it by now. 
<laughs> I thought you guys, oh, the faces you guys were making. Maybe it was just your sister. She that's some funny. of the already jokes she was making. I, my mouth was dropping. <laughs> what was yeah, why? No, that's, that's what she goes for. She goes for the jaw dropping. Like, are you really saying that? And then she says it, and I just sit there like, yeah. I just we, usually we, sit there in we silence. Would get, and we chuckle. would definitely get along. I love that. Oh yeah, you would. Yeah. Yes, Doug. Yeah. You, you and her would. Next and I, time I'm gonna. You, sh- you, I'm, I'm going to semi-shift gears. I'm, I might be ahead of myself here, Mark, and I apologize. But it makes me think of, so, sorry, going forward, you won the national championship. And you guys, the players, right, were on the third floor or wherever, and there was a huge party going on in the hotel. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't you have have liked to have been in the party on the bottom floor or No. Um, because it went in my day, I tell you what, we would have thrown our backpacks to a manager or to our room and we go down and be on top of the bar hanging out. That's my, well, honestly, at the time, if you would have asked me where would I want to be, I would have said, I would have said, yeah, I would have liked to go on downstairs, but we did uh, quite a bit of that in Charlottesville. Okay. So while we, while we were in Minneapolis, my sister was there. Uh, one of my best friends, Jared, was there with his family, so I just hung with them and had a few had a few quiet ones, played some cards, and it was actually a really nice evening. And then once we got back to Charlottesville, we did a we did a bit of that, so it kind of made up for missing that that night. Okay, so mom moms would have been down with me and Jay Willie and hanging out. That's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. No, I, I could miss one because we, like I said, we made up for it a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Was it was it difficult not having her at the at the final four? Your mom. Um, I think it was, it was in hindsight it was a really good decision because she actually got pretty sick. She had um blood clots in both of her lungs, so oh. she would have got on that flight. Something bad, really bad, could have happened because she flies a lot, and that, it happened from her flying so much. So I'm actually I'm actually really happy she didn't come to the final four. Okay. Yeah, smart. I know a little bit about that from stories. Yeah, it was, it was a scare. It was a scare yeah. at the time, but she, she's doing good now. But um, it was funny. We kind of we were going to catch up after the final four when I had some time off. We were going to go to Hawaii, and I said, "Yeah, let's just catch up then. Like, I'll have more time to see you. We can hang out." Right. Um, and she said, "Yeah, okay, we'll do that." And then she found out she's sick, so she got it. She got it in time, and she's doing a lot better now. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. Awesome. Great to hear. I know when she was in New York, she was hanging out hard. She was going to the jazz club. She was going to different restaurants. But, but, but during the uh, during the ACC tournament in 2017, she, she was she the, Yeah, yeah. yeah she, she loves they, just being, traveling and being a monster and trying out new things. Yep. Yep. She wasn't – she was going out to all – she was going throughout the whole city. So she, she was hilarious. I was trying to catch up with her. We never got a chance to. But um, – you, you are, I'm calling you the gentle giant because you, you're one on the court, like a tough son of a gun, right? Off the court, you're a completely different person. But on the court, I've seen you lay guys out on screens, um, knock guys over, protect your teammates, do all the little things to make your team better. And you really are that consummate team player. Um, I'm not sure, and the reason I'm bringing this up is I'm not sure that I would, I would, I don't care how big I was, would want to go up against you. Do you? I don't know if you remember in the, the Bahama during the Bahamas trip. Mm-hmm. Your sister came, right? And there was an issue with some of the. It was either some of the Oklahoma fans or some of the Oklahoma players. Mm-hmm. And there was about to be a little bit of a fight. And I was like, "Oh, I feel badly for those Oklahoma dudes." Do you know what I'm talking about? Uh, was it during the game? No, after the game, and I, I think it was bef- after the game. Um, I guess there were some some people were saying some stuff about your sister, spreading some rumors. Oh, okay, yeah, no, <laughs> no, that was a that was a different, yeah, that was at that was actually at the school. That was a little, yeah. No, I, I don't like. I say this, I don't. I think fighting stupid, but I'll always protect my family, and I I protect my teammates too. So when it comes to family, uh, I do. That's the one thing that I. I budge on and I will protect. So yeah, I, that was a small issue, but it, it was solved, so it was good. Yeah, yeah. I just remember walking with you, and, and you were you were upset. 
and then somebody had said something to me about what happened and uh it, it seemed like you were handling yeah, it yeah family but I was just yeah, yeah and, and ultimately family is important to me and ultimately you guys got the last lap with Oklahoma during the tournament right oh yeah cuz we uh, didn't we didn't play them in the cuz they and Bahamas, yeah. they lost yeah yeah that was and you guys beat their butts um you are one of the few members of the team that lost to UMBC and won a championship. Going into UMBC, what were you thinking? Um, I remember watching the Arizona game before because they had DeAndre Aiden and I lost. And I was like, damn, guess we don't play Aiden. But then we lost to UMBC, so we don't play anymore. But um, yeah, I, I, don't, I honestly don't even remember that whole thing was – if the national championship was surreal, but so was losing to UMBC, that was kind of just like a shock. And it's so, it's so crazy the aftermath of both of those games to think about. Yeah, yeah. So, the last couple of nights in the states, CBS Sports has been viewing, showing, and actually, I watched the triple header the other night. With they showed the UVA Auburn game, then they showed UVA Texas Tech, and, and then they showed. Uh, UVA, Purdue, and actually it was the last four games, even the one against Oregon, that were so intense and down to the wire. At any point, did you were you thinking like against Purdue, all right, we lost this one, good season. Against Auburn, we lost this one, you know, all right, good run. And against Texas Tech, what were your thoughts in the last couple of seconds? Yeah, one of the last – in most of those games, I had a pretty – I was on the bench, so I got to watch it. Um, obviously, I, I think always it's a possibility you can lose, but I was always just stayed hopeful and believed in the guys. Um, and, yeah, those those are some amazing games to be a part of. I, I never exper- – I never – I don't think I'll ever experience anything like that again in my life. So to be a part of that run with that team was, was awesome. That's great. Yeah, I watched, I watched Tony Bennett – at the with like 10 seconds left in overtime against Texas Tech in the championship game and with 10 seconds left in overtime he finally takes a seat on the stool that's perched up on the floor mm-hmm. because you have to stand up you have to walk up the stairs like staircase or whatever it is a few steps to get to the court from the bench mm-hmm. so he's standing on the court while the other coaches and, and players sitting on the bench are sitting down there and it seemed like he was like going finally Finally, I can breathe, right? Because these last four games, especially these last three, have been unconscionable and, like, ridiculous. And I'm not sure I can take another one, but he <laughs> finally was able to go. I'm just thinking, like, in, in all the players' minds and your mind and, and, and his mind, like, at what point were you guys like, this is unreal? I don't know if I can do this again. I mean, I guess you guys were playing, so you guys could do it constantly. But all, the, all of our fans were like, can we please just make one game easy? Right? Yeah. I, th- I think that added to the just this special how special that whole situation was and um yeah like I I think it was perfect just everything how how it played out just to be a part of it to be there um like I said it's a memory for life and something I'm never going to forget yeah um you, know, you again I go back to you being that idyllic team player and against Purdue, you played some. You played some very con- contributed some very strong minutes and important minutes. And your minutes were reduced somewhat against Texas Tech and Auburn. Were you how upset were you, or were you bothered? Were you like, oh, no, this is for the team. This is what's best for the team. Uh, both. I um, I obviously want to play. I want to compete, but I'm not oblivious to my situation and who was playing well and how I was playing. Um, honestly, I was really happy that I played a lot in that Purdue game and that that did a lot for me just to be able to contribute a little bit to the team. Um, but no, the fact that we got all the way, we wouldn't have got all the way if players didn't play how they played and players weren't playing on the court at certain times. And I understand that. So it was um, the, the end result was to win a championship. And that's what Coach Bennett did. The players did, and it's, I can't ask for a better result than that. So that was amazing. I think one of the one of the 
when when I watch I watch you know one of the greatest parts about the March Madness is watching one shining moment, right? Because you're watching people crying when they lose and and the emotions that are poured in from winning games, losing games, and so many possessions are so important. There was a moment in the game, and I didn't see this. I don't think I saw it live because I was there, being there. I, but I, um, during the replays, they show it. And I'll tell you what happened. After the game against Auburn, Ty told me, Dad, I would have been so upset. I would have taken it personally if we would have lost that game. And after he got his fourth foul, he sits on the bench. And he's there for a couple of minutes. And you're like patting his back saying, don't worry, dude. We got you. This is, you know, you're, you're fine. We're all going to be okay. It was one of the most incredible moments and sensitive moments from one player to another. And, and it kind of represents and is indicative of who that team is. And I think of who you are also. And I call you the gentle giant. And that was just a really sweet moment. Um, and, and I think you should know that, that you should be aware of that. So uh, do you remember what I'm talking about? Yeah. I mean, Ty, Ty's an amazing player. He doesn't, he wouldn't even need me to say that, but I, I genuinely feel joy when other players have success and we had success. So I just wanted to be there for all my teammates at any point um, throughout the season, even though my season wasn't going how I thought it would. For me, I was trying to be there for other people. And that time Ty had a great game, but he picked up that foul. And I was just trying to be there for him and ended up winning, getting the W. So that's, that's the important thing. Yo, Jack. So Jack, is Ty a sensitive kid? Sensitive. I, I like. I, I, I like I, to call I, Ty. A... I, I'm surprised he didn't give you an elbow in your mouth when he when you when you said that. Uh, I he would Yeah. He wouldn't elbow a wolf. I'm I'm the wolf and he's the sheep, so he That's knows. Right. That's right. When he's when he's with That's his right. sheep, when he's with Dre and Kihei, he he talks to me and tries to right. tries to be physical. But when he's by himself, he never say he never do anything. Oh, I know that well. I know that well. That's called that. It's, it's it's a it's a it's a reverse of uh, beard muscles, right? When you're with your squad, you're yep. strong. I get it. Yeah, when he's got a sheep behind him, you start yapping and biting. But when he by himself, it's just not much. <laughs> That's funny. Let me let me ask you a question from a former player's perspective. So the furthest I got was Sweet 16, when Cincinnati beat us. Mm -hmm. So I was never a national champion, and thank you, and you guys for being that. Because all us guys feel like we are too. Sorry, no ring though. Sure. What do you think that? No, what you... do you going forward in life? And you know, we're old now. Like I'm 49. But what do you think? Do you think that carries a lot of weight for you going forward, or is it important? Not important? You know. Um, yeah, no, that's a good I'm... question. Um, I think the success we had is a credit to everyone behind us that helped form this culture. It's not just the one year, it's the many years leading up to it. But I don't know. I don't know if that, that ring will help me in life. It's a memory that I'll treasure. The biggest thing I've learned is just the lessons throughout the five years at UVA. That's the things that I'm going to carry with me for a while. Uh, the ring is nice. Obviously, winning a championship is amazing. But um, the journey is is the thing that I'm going to hold with me and the lessons I learned is something far more valuable, I think, um, that's going to carry me on for the rest of my life. Right. Right. You, you during your time there, you and Isaiah developed a really incredible relationship. How did that start? It's funny because our first year we didn't talk at all. We, um, I was roomies with – well, we did. We did talk, but, like, nothing apart from, hi, how are you? And then we um, we were roomies and we got closer. It was me, him, Marielle, and Jared. And then Marielle and Jared left, so it was just me and Zay. And then we got we got really close, and now he's one of my best friends, so I'm very thankful for that relationship. How often do you guys talk right now? We talk pretty often. Um, he's actually a big reason why, why I came and played for the New Zealand team that I played for because I played for them last season. And the coach is uh, amazing. So hopefully that season starts up and I'll be able to play basketball again because if not, I would have been out for a year. 
So what? where are you now? When you finished school, when you graduated UVA, where did you, where'd you end up after that? So after UVA, I went out to LA to train. Uh, I was with Phoenix with the, the summer league. I thought I was going to play with Ty, but they rested him. Would have been cool to play with him. But, um, and then I signed a contract with Poland and I got sick. So I was actually, I was actually sick until December. Um, so that, not, that didn't work out. Uh, then I signed a contract in New Zealand and now that league's being put on hold. So right now I'm just figuring out what, well, right now I'm, I'm staying at home, but just figuring out what the next plan is. Yeah. Well, how did you get sick? I, I had mono. So I had mono. Um, I only had the fatigue symptoms for a few weeks, but I had some other symptoms that kind of messed me up for a while. So I really, I didn't bounce back to normal till uh, late December, which was, and it was shocking to me because I thought I was only going to be out for a month, but it ended up being almost six months that I was out and couldn't uh, work out. Wow. Yeah. So re- um, rewind for a minute. I, the last time I talked to you was in was in Vegas, um, and you you had talked about you know this cryogenic. Uh, incident that you had in Phoenix before you left. Maybe talk about that for a moment because I was like, wow, this is you know the the frostbite yeah. and maybe just I don't think anyone knows that, right? Well, t- tell everyone about that experience. Yeah, I remember that. My whole time in Vegas, I was advocating for people not to use the Cairo chamber. Um, so the day before, I flew out to Phoenix and it was kind of a trial. It wasn't a guaranteed spot in the summer league, so it was a pretty big opportunity for me. Uh, the day before. I got a burned blister under my heel. I don't know if you guys saw Antonio Brown got these things all under his feet after he used the chiro chamber. That's what I got on my heel. And I literally couldn't walk on it. And this was the day I was supposed to trial for the Phoenix Summer League team. So I um, I went to Phoenix. I told the medical staff and they were like, oh, just sit out. Because I couldn't put any pressure on it. I called my agent and he was like, yeah, I don't know if it's a trial or a, you're guaranteed. So if you can play on it, play on it. So I was like, okay, I guess I'll play on it. So I played on it, and for the first hour, I was running on adrenaline. But the second hour of practice, I just it was it was rough. I was I was just hobbling around. Um, but they called my agent during practice. Said Jack's made the summer league team. He can chill out. And I I said cool because I don't know if I would have been able to do that again. Yeah, that that just shows how tough you are. I mean, we we heard it, and it was just like, oh my god, I can't believe you powered through that because that was, does not that was no joke. Yeah. Yeah, but it, it was just a blister, so I knew it would nothing bad would happen. But it was it was painful. Like it was a on my hole on my under my foot. And whenever I put any pressure on it, it was yeah. I'm I'm glad I'm glad it worked out for the best. So I talk about that. What do you say? Hey, you Ethan. Yeah, Ethan. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. No, I texted Ethan straight away. I sent him a photo, <laughs> and he gave me his advice. Because, yeah, Ethan, I trust Ethan with my life. Um, I didn't know the Suns stuff that well. So as soon as I had it, I, I texted Ethan and he said, uh, go get it checked up by a doctor. And so how did, going back to that that um, piece, how did the Phoenix Suns thing go down? Did they did they reach out to you right away after the draft or what, did it take some time? So that was just all my agent. He was trying to set something up for me. I didn't get any workouts, but I got um, that kind of summer league trial for the uh, for the team. So I went to Phoenix for a week, uh, two weeks actually. The first week was kind of a trial, and the second week was getting ready for a summer league. Um, so yeah, that was a that was an awesome experience. I got to hang out with Ty a little bit. Went to went to dinner with, which was cool. That's awesome. Yeah. So what's so you're hoping that this happens, the team happens in New Zealand, which would start when? Is that it next season? It was supposed to start. Um, yeah, I mean, so the season for New Zealand League goes April through. Uh, so it was supposed to start in a week, but it's postponed right now because we're in lockdown. And it might go ahead, it might not. Right now, it's all up in the air, depending on how how the corona um, takes, how it goes for the next few weeks. 
And how competitive is that league? Is that somewhere where you want to stay or is it you'd be looking to go back to Poland or another country? Yeah, honestly, I'm looking to go back overseas. Um, I could, I do like the Australian New Zealand league. That's a really good league. So if I could get a spot in there or maybe in Europe, uh, right now I'm open to anything. I haven't played basketball in almost a year coming up if this league doesn't work. So I just, I just want to play. I don't really, I don't care where I'm playing. I just want to play basketball again um, and just see, see if I can still do it. So that's, that's my biggest priority right now. And we've got Grant on the phone with you too. Talk, Grant, maybe you can talk about your relationship with Jack and what that's been like. I mean, this is the first year without him. How, how did how did that feel? Um, it was definitely different. It was sad. Um, I used to come like I would go out to eat, and Jack would. I would just come back to my apartment, and Jack would just be in my room playing Fortnite. And I just wouldn't have any idea. <laughs> there. So that's not. I always walk in my room now. No one's in there, so it's kind of different. But not Jack. <laughs> Jack Jack's one where I got to know him better. We got closer um, towards the end of his time here at UVA, and then we actually keep in touch uh, pretty often now that he's gone. Mm-hmm. And what about the times when you guys were together? What what were some of the memories that you've had? I know we, you talked about um, a couple of things earlier. Is there is there anything that sticks out in terms of your time with Jack that that you, you kind of carries on? Uh, yeah, I, I'll say one first. I'll say, I'll say one first for GB. Um, I love going to eat out with GB because whenever I eat with him, I get his leftovers. That's what I can't finish. Just give it to Jack. He's like, oh, yeah, that's why I brought you along. <laughs> you got to eat, man. Nah, Jack came up. Jack, Jack calls me GB. Because last year when I started playing and I had Virginia on the back of my jersey, he used to call right. me G just for Grant, and then he added the V for my, for my last <laughs> year. Oh, that was year. Love it. That's great. <laughs> that is pretty So how, how, about, how about you guys? So you have a Kiwi on your team, a dude from Africa, Argentina. What else? What am I missing? Uh, Australia. Italy. Australia. Italy. I'll start, whatever. So how how how's that? Again, again, GV. Going back to you, you're from Charlottesville. Like you could not be more local, right? But for you to have all these guys from all over the world, how cool is that? And what's the? I love it. Um, I'm taking it as in if I ever travel to those countries, I got a place to stay. So those are all of my bucket list mm-hmm. places to visit. But no, I think it's cool just yeah. to learn about other cultures and learn about other ways of life, other way of life, and then kind of like teach them something about Charlottesville and kind of take them to some local places around here. Right. And how, how does that mesh on the team in terms of like culture and the whole, you know, mix, language, all of it, you know, in terms oh, of I think basketball? It, right. I think it mixes well. I mean, kind of the language barrier you can definitely see, but it also just kind of brings another aspect of, of like unity and how the team's together and kind of help each other out. Right. And Jack, were you following the team this year while you were kind of out out with the illness? Yeah, I didn't get to watch many games, um, but I followed all the highlights and all the game scores. And I was fortunate enough to be at that Duke game, uh, which was which is a pretty cool experience. And bring back some memories. Did they show you on the jumbotron at the game, or no? Was it? Would you locate? Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I, they did for a little while, but it was, it was awkward. They put the spot. <laughs> They left it on me for like 15 seconds. I waved and clapped, and they just kept it on my face. Felt like an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> the whole media time, I was just like, And what Where about – I was going to say – Where they have you sitting? Uh, Ronnie, Ronnie gave me a good seat. I was right behind the bench, so he's, he's looking out. Oh, that's great. Yeah. I was going to say, what about the video? So you, I know you weren't there for the for the actual banner raising, but they had you on video. How did that go down? Did they give you a lot of time? Did they give you a script, or was it was it just off the cuff? You did a video for UVA? No, it probably took me like 40 minutes to record that 30 second video. <laughs> Um, oh, no, I was just, I was just, I was just saying, just what shots for me. Ronnie gave me, Ronnie's pretty organized. He gave me like an idea of what to say, and then I kind of had my own spin to it. So, um, yeah, I, I watched the ceremony live, so I couldn't be there, but I was, um, 
I was I was really happy. I was actually working out, trying to work out while I was watching it, and it was just on the bike, and it was it was pretty cool to to be watching that and see the guys smiling and watch Dre look at Ty stupidly throughout it. It was it was funny. <laughs> <laughs> There was definitely a huge, huge round of applause. I think the, definitely the fans were very happy to hear from you, as they will today when or when we post this. They're going to be really happy to hear what you're up to, and, and obviously hear your voice is always nice. So appreciate you coming on. No, no worries. No worries at all. Big Gentle Giant Jack, please say hello to your mom, your sister. Um, wishing them the best, wishing you the best when this thing is over and, and – Hooking up with a team uh, where you want to be, uh, you're, you're an incredible teammate, very good player. So you, you're always going to be one of my favorites, you and Isaiah, and appreciate all of your time and, and your success at UVA. I will. No, thanks for having me on the show, guys, and um, and stay safe for the next few months or weeks, however long it is, and I hopefully I'll get to catch up with all you guys. Slam! Short. 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 Short.